haven't, we haven't really named the turkeys. Oh! At Redeemer Lutheran School, students gleefully jump into hands-on learning. Composing their outdoor environment brings science enrichment into the garden rainbow rooms. The evolutions of the gardens at Redeemer really come from a couple of the monarch caterpillars that I found at my house one day about 15 years ago. And I brought them to school and I was overwhelmed by the interest of the children and, the, and their parents and the teachers and all the staff here. So we brought native and adapted plants and put them on the playgrounds here. The first thing I did was start teaching a junior master gardener program with the third graders. And that was such a success for them. the teachers just loved it. And I looked into the research on the Junior Master Gardener program, and it shows a significant increase in children's science uh, achievement scores and science interest. In 2005, the National Wildlife Federation really began their schoolyard habitat program, and we got incredible resources here in town. But, but the leader of the of National Wildlife Federation came out and helped design our butterfly garden and our pollinator garden. And from that, from the children seeing the interrelationship of all life, you know, the fact that if you put in host plants, then uh, the caterpillars and the insects will come. And so we've been able to incorporate nature into our outside play areas, which gives kids a chance to get out, experience nature, experience animals, um, experience the playground and burn off some energy as well. I've always liked learning about the actual animals and plants. If you can have animals on the school, it is just the surest way to the children's heart. We like that they have the animals that are accessible, that they're incorporating nature into the curriculum, and that they have an actual pull-out science, that they actually will go do experiments to relate what they're learning in the classroom on a weekly basis. In Redeemer's Water Thrifty Certified Wildlife Habitat, every day is a new awakening as students observe plant and insect cycles. At this age, the children aren't typically terrified of insects yet, and so they are more willing to be open and learn about them. And so when they connect with the nature and we're teaching them about the insects, they learn not to be afraid and that they can tell the good or beneficial insects from the pest insects, which is actually a project that we're working on this year with the third graders. So we're going out into the gardens, we're identifying the insects that we see there, we're looking at things like ladybug larvae, the monarch caterpillars, we're watching the life cycles, we're explaining to them how those insects go from stage to stage. Since there's a lot of science going on outside, Teachers work together to reinforce curriculum indoors and out. Then when I'm teaching out of the book, we'll also be talking about what we just saw in the rainbow room the day before. And so I'm able to bridge that into um, what we're learning about. What does the plant do in photosynthesis? It makes food for its own self. And mm -hmm. by using the sun's energy and um, holes through the bottom of its leaves. Mm -hmm. And what comes out of the holes in its bottom of its leaves? Air. What? What? Water. Yeah, Oxygen. what kind of air? Oxygen. Yes, and then a little bit of water vapor, vapor. right? And then what do you see in that bag right there? Water. water. Water vapor. That's what you see, and where is it coming from? The, the tree. tree. Students learn which plants feed beneficial insects and birds, from fruits and seeds to pollen and nectar. Host plants for hungry caterpillars guarantee generations of butterflies. Flowers for pollinators mingle with food the students want to eat too. There's a lot of reasons to grow food, and, and the first one is that we think about is service. Uh, we, for many years, we grew all the herbs for meals on wheels. This year, we planted a three sisters garden, with corn and squash and beans, and of course, there's great children's literature associated with that. It takes just a little bit to make a huge difference. Children will come and bring things from their lunches or uh, bring a potato from home that they want to grow. And regardless of season, we'll chop it up and put, put them in the gardens and see what happens. A lot of informal testing goes on here. Redeemer parent Wizzy Brown, an entomologist for Texas AgriLife Extension, knows that edible insects are also hiding in the garden. Grasshoppers, um, we can do crickets, we can do mealworms. Um, we're going to actually, that's something we're going to do in the curriculum this year. We're going to talk about entomophagy with insects and eating and how you can actually eat insects and have them as a protein source and different things like that. I caught grasshoppers with a friend. We cooked them and he ate them. 
Some lessons are best learned hands-on, especially when it comes to caring for other living things. My students love coming out every day and being able to work in the gardens and with the animals. So I have two students every week that when we come out here, instead of playing on the playground, they're out in the gardens and with the animals and sweeping the sidewalks and uh, whatever. Whatever she has as a list, they would much rather be doing that. And so that's just amazing to me that the need for them to be in the gardens and being with animals and um, having those experiences that may be back in the you know, a long time ago on the farm that they don't get anymore. If I take a class out and say that uh, we're now going to weigh how many weeds we've pulled and, and the winners get the Skittles, boy, don't you know we get weeds pulled? Here they feel like the gardens are theirs, the animals are theirs, so they're making sure that they're taken care of really well. And so they feel that responsibility. We have a little boy right now who's, who's uh, trying to get a wheelbarrow so they, that they can help move the crushed granite in here. And studies have proven that if kids have physical activity, that their minds are a lot sharper in the classrooms and they're able to concentrate longer. What I piggybacked on was the 35 years of play and playground equipment research that was done by the University of Texas at Austin and Dr. Joe Frost. We teamed up with Norm Stimke, who was our principal here for 42 years. and. He and volunteers from the church and from the community built these playgrounds out of found materials and donated things. Redeemer Lutheran represents how every team contributes to a nurturing environment in their own way. Since 2002, we've had 27 Eagle Scout projects. So there's always somebody wanting something to do. A Girl Scout developed QR codes so that students can identify, photograph, and write stories about the garden's plants. Former students that come back in now that are starting to have um, kids of their own that are coming in, and these are the things that they remember. They remember the gardens, they remember the playgrounds, they remember their teachers, and just the activities that they were able to get involved with here. There's a lot of resources here in town. In the first place for teachers and schools who'd like to do the same thing is to go to the National Gardening Association, kidsgardening.com, and they are a kind of a compendium of the available grants. National Wildlife Federation has schoolyard habitats and they're helpful for, to, for design. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department have Project Wild, which is a wonderful curriculum. And they have all kinds of resources that you could bring to your school. 